Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. My alarm's going off saying it's 10 o'clock, so I need to get up here. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Uh, I like this. I love this graphic because it doesn't look like that outside, number one. But it's a beautiful sunrise. Psalm 6511, you crown the year with goodness and your paths drip with abundance. What a beautiful way to start the service this morning. Um, it's a great day. We've got folks here with us uh, in person. Those of you watching live with us, welcome. We're glad to have you here this morning. It is a start of hopefully a wonderful new year, a change, a change where uh, we come into a repentance and then into a relationship <coughs> with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning for announcements, coming up very quick, we did this last month. We were just like, boom, boom, boom. We got things done, we got moving, but we've got a men's breakfast coming next Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Right here, the sanctuary turns into a, uh, an area, well, let's just call it a buffet restaurant. <laughs> and we are looking forward to uh, everyone joining us for that. And as soon as we get done with that, we're gonna tear down the tables, we're gonna put away the chairs. Well, I'm not gonna put away the chairs. We're gonna Rearrange. turn the chairs. We're gonna set up a screen, a 12 foot screen, and because next Saturday night uh, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be showing the next installment in the God's Not Dead series, We the People. And if you haven't heard of this one, please go out to our website, GraceStreet.Church. Click on Grace Street Cinema. There's a little um, piece there that talks about what the movie is about. And then there's also a trailer there for you to watch. Uh, I'm going to have you go out there to see it and find it because... We want you to be using that website as a way to get your information about what's happening here at church and uh, within the ministry. So we look forward to that as well. And then five weeks after that, <laughs> just five short weeks, so we're a month and a half away from season 18. And I ran into somebody who was around uh, for season one back in 06 here about a week, week and a half ago, and they could not believe that we were 18 years in on this. Before we know it, we'll be having a big 20th anniversary. Um, and so we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to having people here and lots of racing, uh, lots of things coming up. Not much will change as far as the rules are concerned because the last three years we've come to a consensus that we think we got it dialed in for the rules finally. So we're looking forward uh, to that as well. That's all we have for our announcements this morning. So now it's time to slow down, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for the <coughs> message that the Lord has given Pastor Mark this morning called A Fresh Start. And when you see it, he's got start all in capital letters with periods after each of the letters. So I haven't had a chance to, to glance at the sermon. I have a feeling he's got those letters out for a specific reason, so I'm looking forward to seeing how we can get a fresh start in this new year through the scriptures. Our call to worship uh, that Pastor Mark has chosen this morning comes from Revelation 21.5, which was just in my daily devotionals, not yesterday, but the day before, as I finished, uh, kind of gotten to the end there, but this one is good. I love this one. It says, and the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. Now, there's so much packed into this one verse. Look, I've made everything new. We are getting, you know, we had 45 seconds more light today than yesterday. That's new. We have heat that works. That's somewhat new. Um, we're still in this new space. But when we look outside, we're that much closer to spring. And, and I love the graphic of, that Mark put up here of the plant coming up through the ground. Something new. This is something that we can do as humans every single day, every moment of every day. Is something is always new. But here's the other thing. And this is, a, I almost see this as a call to study. Call to Bible study. Write this down for I tell you, or for what I tell you is trustworthy and true writing it down, and journaling. Now, that might not be something that works for you, 
But maybe as you're reading, doing your daily reading, if a verse pops out and says, hey, this is something that is really important. God says, I want you to remember this. Just write that verse down and just write what God has put on your heart at that time. It's a great way to get started in the new year. And I would challenge you all, if you're not reading your Bible every day, if you're not doing a daily devotion, to do so. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the message that you've given to Mark. We thank you for this new year and in this message, how we are going to hear how we can have a fresh start right now. No matter what we've been through, no matter who we used to be, we can become someone new through you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you've given us, Father. We thank you uh, again for this message. But Father, this morning I pray a, or pray a special blessing upon Pastor Mark as he is still getting over uh, his illness. I know he's been pumped full of antibiotics and, and is hoping um, to feel better very soon. But I pray that you give him the strength to push through this message and this very important message. And I know whatever he gives us this morning is from you, Father, and that it will be something lasting and true. Father, we thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. sermon notes too if you want to take notes. Write this thing down. Well good morning everybody. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay because yep. I don't have a lot of voice so I'll see, see if I can adjust that a little bit better. Well I gotta tell you you know it's been an interesting uh, couple of weeks here trying to get through all this stuff of the asthmatic bronchitis and everything and so this will be the most I've talked in the last two weeks. Lori has been loving it because I just have to sit there <laughs> quietly because yeah. if not, I start wheezing and coughing. So um, it was a fresh start, kind of a, a, a welcome change, I think, for her. She didn't have to listen to me all the time. But. Hardly. Um, so I, I picked this verse in Revelation today because we are in the midst of a fresh start, a new beginning. And it says, look, I'm making everything new. And then he said, write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. So obviously he says, this is very important for us to pay attention to. And allowing us to kind of step back. And if we use more than one of our senses, by writing it down, we retain it longer. And uh, on my most recent trip out of Wichita, I decided that I was going to leave early because we had this storm system coming in. I wanted to get out of Dodge. Well, it's not Dodge. Dodge is further west. Dodge City. Uh, but I wanted to get out of town and get on the road and get as far as I could before these winter storms hit um, because there were a lot of blizzards and things going on. So I left a little bit before 5 o'clock in the morning and I started driving uh, out of Wichita and I was heading up the Kansas Turnpike. And as I drove up the turnpike, the further I got from town, the darker it got. We got rid of all the light pollution and everything out of there. And it just kept getting darker and darker and darker. And so it was interesting to note that aside from what my headlights were illuminating out there in the middle of the prairie, you really couldn't see anything at all. It was just black. So you couldn't see fences. You couldn't see any of the things that you would normally see in the light. So the dark was enveloping the entire area. And it made me think kind of that metaphorically about the darkness that exists in our world today. And whether or not the darkness that are felt by some people would be like that, where they just can't see past this little thing and it, because everything else in their life seems to be so bad and so dark. And so I wondered about that, you know, because you're out there driving along by yourself, no one else to talk to. But as I drove through that Flint Hills area, and, and if you can imagine, if you've ever been out there in the Kansas foothills, 
and you're driving across there, I mean, the, the Flint Hills area is really neat because if you want to go back and see what it was like in the mid-1800s, it's pretty much unchanged out there. It's just prairie grass and prairie land everywhere. So as I was driving through there, I kept thinking about the passages in the Bible about darkness and light. And it really kind of struck a new accord with me because I, I had a better understanding of what it would be like to be really kind of stuck in darkness where it enveloped everything around you. And you really had no concept of anything outside of that area and being stuck in that darkness. I know it's kind of heavy stuff, right? But we're in the middle of no man's land and it's dark, what else is there? And it, it really made me think of, uh, a lot about these things. So as I drove on and kept driving on and on, the sun began to rise and the darkness was given way to light. And it was very slow to happen. It wasn't like, boom, here's the light all of a sudden. But it started kind of going into some grays and then you could progressively see what the darkness was hiding all around you. You saw a whole new world with trees and hills and fence line. There was a coyote running across the field. There was cattle out there grazing. But see, all of that had been hidden by the darkness. And until the light started bringing it to day, you didn't realize what the world was that was around you. So it was a whole different view of what was surrounding me. And then the sun broke through. And everything came to light. It came into full color. The darkness was gone. And all that was hidden was now visible. So that light came in and dispelled all the darkness. And it brought on a fresh start, a new beginning. God's watercolors in the sky made me think about our passage from Psalms 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I thought about that and I said, wow, this, that the verse really comes to light now. Because it was just like, boom, here's all these beautiful colors up in the sky. And then you could see all of that world around us. And this was a new day that God had made, especially for us. What a great experience. And it made me think, even though my eyes were open, I didn't see the world that God had created for me until he dispelled the darkness. Until the darkness went away, I couldn't see that world. It's really something to think about, if you really think about it. And to be out there, it was kind of one of those God experiences you get. And I thought about it literally for hundreds of miles afterwards as I was driving. So are you ready for a fresh start, a new beginning? Well, for most of us, we tend to spend our final days of the year reflecting on who we are, where we're going with our lives, what we've done, and it gives us that perspective on, you know, what we've done or what we've left undone in our lives for that year, in the latest trip around the sun. It's also time for us to look ahead and plan for changes. And this usually comes in the form of, wow, I really need to lose some weight. I'm starting to look like a Oompa Loompa. And so it's time to make some changes in my life, or something similar to that. <laughs> it's a time to kind of reflect on ourselves and say, okay, you gotta go eat an ice cream and cookies at night. That's all there is to it. So it's a time to start the year off, this new year differently. A fresh sort, a start, something that's different from a do-over, because really there's no do-overs in life. What's done is done, and then the reality sets in. A fresh start denotes the opportunity for positive change, to upgrade our situation, to make a change for the better. So the trend each year is to make a resolution of sorts to improve in areas that we might be falling short in. And that's well and good, but in most resolutions fall short within the first 90 days. And then we're right back to where we began. 
and it becomes a point of frustration and rarely leads to lasting change. Because that was a temporal change, something that was very temporary for us. So what do we do? Where do we go from there? Well, God wants us to be the best that we can be, and he promises a better future through faith in Christ. And it's our journey. It's our journey through life. God gives us free will to, as to how we spend our time on the journey. And, and some people, they, they just trudge on through life without God at their side, without having God in their lives at all. And it usually ends up with them wishing they had a different life. And I'm guessing we've all been there and we've all chosen to journey with God. That's why we're here today. That's why we're online today. And I want to explore several truths you need to keep in mind as we progress through our journey and through the message today. So what I've done is I, I, as I was doing this message, I came up with 10 truths that we need to hang on to and we need to fully understand in order to make a lasting change in our lives. So at the end of that 90 days, it doesn't all go away, and we're not right back to where we began. But if we hang on to these 10 truths, then we will make a lasting change in our life. So truth number one is if we don't know who we are, we'll never know how we ought to live. So we have to reflect on who we are. We have to take a good, hard, truthful, honest look at who we are, who sits within our skin. We need to realize who we are in order to be able to make a lasting change. Dr. Billy Graham came up with a program to help people on their way to have a better chance at success. And this comes from the Billy Graham Institute out there. And I had a friend that used to go out there every other year. Uh, and so he kept asking me to go along with him, go along with him, but I could never make it happen. But I do want to make it out there because I've driven past many times on my way out east. So I'm going to share a couple of those things. Seven steps to a new beginning. And I'm going to start it off with another truth that I had come up with. Truth number two is God's promise is true. And he says... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. See, that's a truth and a realization. Remember I said you have to realize who you are? Well, if you have Christ in your life, if you invite Christ into your life, guess what? You are a new creation. That's why I read it the way I did. If anyone's in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. You had that fresh start from the time that you said yes to Christ. You are a new creation. You need to realize that. And even if you don't, even if you've given your life to Christ, you are a new creation. Whether you feel like it or not. See, a lot of times we make our decisions and we make our choices and we, our perspective is all around what we feel. But this is the truth. If you've given your life to Christ, you are a new creation. No ands or buts about it, whether you feel like it or not. So what does that mean? What really happens when we give our life to Christ? Well, throughout the message this morning, I'm going to give you seven gifts that God gives us when we commit our life to Christ. And we're going to start with number one, which is a new relationship. The first thing that happens when we give our lives to Christ is that God gives us a new relationship. Once we were separated from God because of our sins, and not just separated, but see, God hates sin. So we were actually alienated from God. We were alienated from him. And the Bible says that we were excluded without hope and without God in the world. In Ephesians 2.12, it says, In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. 
and you did not know the covenant promises that God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. And see, Paul is telling the Ephesians that they were outcasts. They were stumbling their way through life, not living life to the fullest. But listen to what the next thing he tells us is. Truth number three, God did not leave us there. See, even though we were outcasts, even though we were alienated from God, because we were sinners, Here's the truth. God didn't leave us there. Verse 13 says, Now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. <clears throat> For Christ himself has brought peace to us. So I like to think of people who have kind of a tormented soul when I read this. And they're separated from God and they're alienated and they just feel alone in the world. And they have no hope. There's no peace in their life. I'm going to have to do this several times in order to keep having a voice. But see, once they were separated from God and they came into God's presence and they said yes to Christ, guess what? All of that was gone. They got a fresh start, a new beginning. Yes, this is the first thing that happened when you committed your life to Christ, is that God gave you a new relationship. He is now your loving, heavenly Father. You are now his child, spiritually reborn into his family. You have an everlasting relationship with God through your faith in Christ. You have a new relationship. You've got a new family. Look around you. They're sitting in the room with you today. See, and in doing that, then we were giving a new citizenship as well. So we got a new relationship and a new citizenship. The second thing that God gives us when we commit to our life in Christ is that new citizenship. Now, I'm not talking about this. We're, we're still a citizenship. We still have citizenship in wherever we reside in this country, but now we're also a citizen of the kingdom of God. And if a person wants to become a new citizen in most companies, countries, they have to renounce their former allegiances and commit to a new allegiance. I want you to hang on to that thought because it's very important. If a person wants to become a new citizen in most countries, they have to renounce their former allegiances and commit to a new allegiance. Do away with the old. Seek the new. Sound familiar? Yeah. So as we bring Christ into our life, we get rid of those things that kept us detracted, that kept us away from God, our sinful nature, the person that we used to be, because we are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. The new is here. And as long as we're on this earth, we will possess dual citizenship. On one hand, we owe allegiance to our nation, and we're called to be good citizens. But we are also citizens of the kingdom of God. It's an invisible kingdom which Christ is the head of. Our supreme loyalty, then, is to Christ. And if someone demands then that we do wrong, truth number four pops up, we must obey God rather than men. And if we go into Acts 5 and we look at what's going on, and, and the apostles were gathered before the Sanhedrin, the high priests and the council, and they were accusing them. They said, hey, look, listen. We told you not to go spreading and teaching these things throughout the city. And the apostles were going out there doing exactly what Christ commanded them to do in the Great Commission. To go into all the world and spread the good news. And these guys say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're making us look bad here. You're telling them, telling everybody that we killed him off. Well, it was the truth. That's exactly what they did. And so they brought him before the Sanhedrin and, and the council and the high priests. 
And Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on the cross. I love that. They just pointed it right at him and said, hey, here's the truth. You did it. You got to own up to it. You own this one. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand side as prince and as savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. So this was their response to the charges that they're out there teaching after they told them not to. Well, they have no authority. They're under God's authority. They're under God's authority. They have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. They're, they're a citizen of the kingdom of God. So I love that. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey him. And this was the response to, to the high priest and the Jewish council, telling him they were not to teach in Jesus' name. One of their very own had to tell them. And this is his word. So my advice is, leave these men alone. Let them go. If they're planning and doing these things merely of their own accord, they will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will be able to overthrow them. You will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. So he was warning the other people in here, don't go against the Spirit of God. Don't go against these people out here because they've got God on their side. You might be fighting against God. So truth number five is God's authority governs over the authority of of men. God's authority governs over the authority of men. And someday, the Bible tells us, this world's kingdoms will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever and ever. So if we go from our message that we started off with this morning, we talked about how in Revelation, all things were made new. And then he tells us that the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ will reign forever and ever. Revelations eleven fifteen. So another thing that we inherit from God is our faith is a new family. A new family. So we just made it through the holidays. Who in here needs a new family? I mean, Siri. Okay, Terry got it. Good. So... Sometimes family gatherings don't go exactly as we want them to, okay? Sometimes there's maybe a little bit of strife or maybe a little bit of struggle, hard feelings ensue and things. So, you know, you get through the holidays and you're going, man, I need a new family. So maybe we can't just go trade them in. But then again, the good news is we don't have to. Not only does God give a new relationship with himself and he makes us citizens of his kingdom, but he also gives us a new family, the family of God. You aren't just related to God. You are now related to all the other believers. So as we look around today, everyone in here is a brother and sister in Christ, in God's family. So we're related to all the other believers out there. That should make you feel good. New family. Fresh start. Truth number six. Everyone who truly believes in Christ Jesus is now your spiritual brother or sister. This one reason here that we are brothers and sisters in Christ means you're never going to be alone again if you know Christ. You are part of God's family with brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and want to help you. And here's the one, I, I put it in bold, in italics, if you will let them. If you will let them. So in order to have that love, in order to have that grace, in order to have that mercy coming from your brothers and sisters in Christ, you've got to let them in. You've got to let them help you when you need the help. So far, it sounds like we've kind of won the Christmas lottery, doesn't it? 
kind of a great thing. On top of all of these things, we're only halfway through. God gives us a new purpose. And some people are very focused, using all of their energies to reach their goals. And others drift through life with little purpose or direction. Living for the moment, never thinking about where they're headed, what they're doing, where they're going, and what's going to become of their life. Most people probably live somewhere in between those two things. But they all have this in common. They're living only for themselves and their own happiness. Do we know anyone like this? At work? In an organization? At church? Let's face it, they're everywhere. And sadly enough, some of them call themselves Christians. Yep. Ever sit on one of those church committees where hard decisions are having to be made? Yeah. They can string out for months at a time and a lot of ill will and ill feelings come in. But you always see it. The sheep's clothing comes off and we get to see the true nature of some people. I'm not saying they're all bad, but sometimes selfish desire clouds their judgment and then it just kind of shows up. This person that you thought you knew the whole time all of a sudden was a wolf in sheep's clothing. When we had to tear Salem down after the flood and close the church, we had to give up part of the past and all of the emotions. And every bit of that was temporal in nature. But the emotions that came pouring out, the decisions that had to be made, the fights that ensued were anything but Christian. We need to let go and let God show us his way. And in doing so, he will give us the new purpose. So we gave away a building because of the flood. And it was going to cost millions of dollars to restructure that building. But through the insurance money we got, guess what? We were able to buy a new building and new land and start up new and start up fresh. God had a new purpose for what he wanted, but we had to have, the people had to let go first. So truth number seven is, when we let go of the past, when we come to Christ, God gives us that new purpose. But what do we have to do first? We have to let go of the past. We have to let go of all that emotional junk. We can't drag it along with us. It's going to do nothing but drag us down. When we let go of the past, when we come to Christ, God gives us a new purpose. And now we want to live for Christ and not just ourselves. And in doing so, God gives us a new power. One of the Bible's most comforting truths is that when we come to Christ, God himself comes to live within us by the power of his Holy Spirit that dwells within us. When you come to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. That brings us to truth number eight. God is really good because literally, Lori can tell you, I couldn't even get two sentences out before without wheezing and coughing. Truth number eight. God has given us a new purpose. But without new power, we will never be able to achieve it. So God's got this as part of his whole plan. He made us, gave us a new relationship. He made us new citizens. He gave us a new purpose in life. He gave us a new family. And now he says, in order to make all this work, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you power. Matthew 28 says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus gave us power and authority to act in his name. Let's think about that. He tells us, I want you to go out and I want you to baptize people. 
I want you to get out there and bring them back home to me. And I give you the authority to act in my name. And because of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, Jesus is in with us each step of the way for eternity. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What a promise. We're never alone. He's underscoring that. If you, if you notice, we've heard that now twice, that you are never alone. Jesus promised you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And this means that we were reborn, baptized, baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of Christ living within us. We weren't meant to live a Christian life on our own strength. God has provided his spirit to help us. And it dwells within us because of our faith in Christ. Truth number nine. All of this gives us a new future through Christ. The old is gone. Remember? The old is gone. Behold, I make all things new. A new destiny for us. A new destination for us. The word conversion means to change. And the most radical change of all comes when we come to Christ, is that he gives us that new destiny. We know what our future is going to be. He's got it planned out for us. But we have not only a destiny, we have a new destination. We have a new destination. And he tells us in the scriptures in there, and John, he tells us that he went ahead of us and he made a place for us. And if it wasn't so, I would have told you so. But he goes and prepares a place for us. We have a new destiny, a new destination. See, once we were headed for hell, but now we're headed for heaven. Once we were bound for eternal separation from God, and now we live with him forever. We have a new destiny. We have a new destination. Once we had no hope of eternal life, but now we do through Christ. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We have promise after promise after promise that God is with us. Emmanuel. As we consider these things, we would like to change in our lives when we make our new resolutions that we make, we need to pause and go to God first and let him guide us to those right decisions. Guide us to that right path to convert our lives into his presence and into his plan for our lives. Let it be a lasting change, not based on our emotions or our present situation, but trusting that God has the best plan for our lives. Seven steps to a new beginning. In the midst of life's problems and heartaches, we never forget this. This life is temporary. This life is temporary. One day, all of our burdens will be cast aside. And we will be with Christ forever. Before us is a new destiny when we belong to him, when we give our lives to Christ, when we give our hearts, our holy of holies to Christ. He gives us a new destiny. Life ends. Eternity where? It's your choice. So we have a new journey to embark on. And above all, remember, when we come to Christ, God gives us a whole new life, a new relationship, a new citizenship, a new family, a new purpose, a new power, a new destiny. Don't ever take lightly what Christ did for us on the cross. Don't ever take lightly what God has given you. If you have made the choice and turned to Christ in repentance and faith, this isn't the end of his abundance. It's the beginning. For God also gives us one final gift, that new journey. A whole new path to follow until the day that he takes us up to heaven. You talk about a great, great gift. One in the Christmas lottery. This is it. This is it. In other words, your decision for Christ isn't an end, but it's a beginning. 
It's the beginning of a whole new life. So we come to truth number 10. We are only called to become Christians, but we are called to be Christians. The Christian life is a new journey, one that will take us out for the rest of our life. But remember what we have to do. We have to refocus our thoughts away from the past, away from the emotional decisions, away from things that would keep us from God. Trust God to help us succeed. Depend upon him. See, we can't depend upon ourselves for our own success. We've proven that we can't do it on our own. That's why we fail. And some people just don't get it. They stumble and fall and then get up and say, well, I'll just try harder. And it's like you go up to a wall and you bang your head against it, but the wall doesn't fall down. So you bang your head again and again and again. And you just keep doing it, think, thinking, well, maybe it'll fall over this time. See, that's that definition of insanity. Probably been hitting your head so many times on the wall, but doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It's the definition of an insanity. If we keep doing the same thing, then we're going to keep getting the same results in our lives. We can't change who we are. Only God can do that. We can't change who we are. I'm not speaking from the outward person, but the inner person. The real person is hidden from the person of the heart. If we refocus our thoughts, success in the Christian life, that is not trying harder, but living smarter, giving God control of your life. We can't keep doing the same things over and over again and expecting our life to change. God is the only one who can change us from the inside out. Zechariah 4, 6 says, You will not succeed by your own strength or power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When someone becomes a Christian, they become a brand new person inside. They're not the same anymore. Even if we don't feel it. A new life has begun. A fresh start. God specializes in new beginnings. And Jesus Christ has the power to do that. That's called being born again. Of the chance to start over. We can have a fresh start with a new life as we begin this new year. God says, I don't want you to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to give you a whole new life. So our resolution, will you have a fresh start in life? Will you have a new beginning? It's your choice. So how can I have a fresh start? Well, I can have a fresh start by S, stop making excuses. P, take an inventory of your life. And this is what I was talking about. We have to be honest for ourselves about our lives. Act in faith. Refocus my thoughts and trust in God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, thank you that you make all things new in our hearts. Thank you that you have given us this fresh start, a new beginning, an opportunity to come in and make you the Lord of our lives. Lord, we just submit ourselves to you today. Take us and make us and mold us Lord, we, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come and dwell within us and cast aside all of those things that would separate us from you. Father God, we praise you and thank you for your promises, for your truths that stand the test of time. We thank you that your word is true and that, Lord, you stand by your word. And through our faith in Christ, you will make us all new. is good.
I'm just not talking very loud now. Sorry about that. You know it's bad when your wife tells you you're not talking loud enough. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. But I say God is good because when we were talking before service, I struggled to hear him and I don't have a hearing problem. He was very quiet and very troubled in speaking. So thank you, Lord, for the message this morning. And I pray that this is the final corner you're turning to feeling better. I sure hope so. And I'm also giving praise to the Lord that you're not traveling this week. Or he's like, yes, second man. We're about to do something that also signifies that new start, starting new each and every day as we take communion this morning. Paul records this in the scriptures by saying this, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it, and then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine and after supper saying, This cup is the cup of between the, the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me of me as often as you drink it. And then he finishes this in verse 26 saying, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Father in heaven, we thank you for what this meal represents. It represents your new covenant, a new start for each of us, each and every day, as we remember what your son did for us. Father, we call our world, our country, our community into a, a repentance and a renewal and a return to you, Father, in this new year. In Jesus' name. Denise and Steve are traveling, and we pray that they would have safe travels as they are in Illinois visiting family. Um, we've come to that time where normally we would have uh, our prayer warrior Denise come up and do uh, prayers for the people, but we want to still continue to do that. So are there, I know we've got Angela who's reached out to us who has double pneumonia and is in the ICU. affected by a bout of gout in his knee and is in some pretty severe pain. I don't know what that feels like and I'm not sure I really want to.
Uh, they're there, we know for sure there are so many prayer requests out there. But right now, Father, we pray for uh, Steve and Denise as they are traveling, visiting family. We pray for Angela, who's in the ICU with double pneumonia. We pray for Mark, and we pray for his dad, Harold, as they are both not feeling well. Mark is turning the corner, but certainly has some way to go. And we pray, thank you that he does not have to travel this week, Father, uh, for work, that he can get some uh, relaxation in his own home, which you cannot do when you're traveling. We pray for Harold, and as he is at home and not feeling well, Father, uh, that uh, he would be able to turn the corner and feel better. Pray for my dad as he is fighting this battle with gout, which uh, just from the look on his face is pretty severe. And we, we pray for healing for that. Father, there's so many prayer requests, and we have, we've got pages of, of prayer requests, certainly, Father. And there's so much going on in our world. If we could pray for everyone, Father, we would be in prayer 24-7, which I don't know that would be such a bad idea. But we thank you that we have an opportunity to lift these people up to you, even though you already know what their needs are, what their uh, healing needs to be. You give us an opportunity to speak with you. Let this be a new start for each of them, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I, I turn this back over to Mark, I was reading, and this, Father, we just pray right now for whomever these first responders are heading for, that you would keep everyone safe, and that if someone is injured, that you would take care of them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So this comes, because uh, you said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am reminded of Psalm 150, which says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with a lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the final psalm in the book of Psalms. But it could just as easily be the first. Because we're giving praise to our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the word that you gave Mark this morning. Kind of fun. God puts these things on our hearts. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so we just come before you today as we start to close out our worship time in here together. Uh, we curated some songs here for you. The list will be up on Facebook for those who aren't with us here today. But there's a message in the music as well. And so I encourage you to make sure that as we close these songs up each week, to make sure that you go through and, and play them through and listen to what the message is in the music. So as we close out this time of worship, we go to God. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for victory and power in your name. Thank you that you hold the keys over death and that by your might, Jesus was raised from the grave, paving that way for us to have new life. Thank you that you have a plan for us and that you've made a way for us to join you in eternity and that you have gone and prepared a place for us as your word promises. Today we confess our need for you to refresh us, to give us a new start, to make us new again. We ask that you would renew our hearts and our minds and our lives for the days ahead. We pray for your redemption for us keep your words of truth planted firm within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and what is right. Dispelling that darkness that surrounds us. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. 
And Lord, we trust that your voice would speak louder and stronger than anything and any attacks that may come our way. Remind us that we are safe with you and that your purposes and plans for our lives will not fail. We ask that you would be our defense and our guard, keeping our way clear, removing the obstacles and covering our pitfalls, Lord. Lead us onto your level ground. Shine your light in us and through us and over us to be a light to our world. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and purposes and set your way before us. May all your plans for us succeed. May we reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and your healing. Thanks be to you, God, for your indescribable gifts. To you be the